Right, morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're talking big things and little things this morning, I think, are really. So, uh, um, some, something like that. And, and, and that's not elephants and mice. So, uh, it's uh, got something to do with uh, what you can, what you do when, when you need to uh, step up to the plate or, or what, uh, what you don't do. So, Lee, you better, you better unravel that one for us because I think I'm tangling it up terribly. Not at all, Ivan. I think that's exactly it is. You know, it's that what what do you do when you when you do have to step up to the plate or when um, huge demands are being made on you in a particular life situation or you've got a big goal that you're wanting to achieve or an end that you have to reach? Um, and what is it in you? So this really came from Trevor from yesterday. I was really struck with this. You know, we were talking about for for, uh, for Leo's sake. I wanted just to we, we did a reflection yesterday on um, the the good old story of the professor and putting the rocks in the jar and then the little pebbles and the sand and the and the water. You know, as and the rocks being your priorities. Uh, that if you don't get those rocks in, and and Trevor kind of spoke about it as. Uh, running a marathon, running comrades marathon. So not just any old marathon. Uh, and and what do you do when you hit the wall and you, you throw the big stuff in you? You know, what is it that you've got in you that you can bring to the fall that's going to get you through to the next 20 Ks or 30 Ks? And then when that's done, you know, what's the little stuff that you can keep pushing and pulling to, to get you to, to the finish line? And I was really struck by that picture, and uh, and it made me reflect on, uh, for me, the last 10 years, I keep making it a round number, but I've lost track of time. The last 10 years have been really, really tough. Um, from uh, parents moving in after having a number of burglaries and, and, and uh, crime events and 10 years of my dad being in and out of hospital for various illnesses, eventually having throat cancer and um, nursing him through that until his death. Uh, my mom's grief, my husband lost his job. Um, and, and yeah, it was a lot of big, big stuff. And what do you have in you to keep going? You know, I sometimes ask myself, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd think, why am I not a basket case? Um, <laughs> why am I not, you know, and because I would get up and keep going. And, and I think, so the one thing I realized is, yes, thanks, Jeff, I say to you. <laughs> I, maybe I am. A proof is in the right in front of you. <laughs> um, what is it that that I have within me? You know, is there some in, inherent strength that I have? And so I think, okay, there are some things that I've been given in life that helps me to do this. I think being the oldest child, it you are already on the front line. So I think that. I always come back to, yes, I, I had to do that. I had to pick up the stick. I had to keep going. Uh, it's something that was in me. It's probably part of my personality. I've taught, you know, I'm the A student. So, um, and it's interesting. I've just been reading some, um, an article in psychology today about the big five personality traits. I can't remember them all, but one of them is conscientiousness. It's the dullest, right? I mean, how dull to be conscientious. And yet they say that is one of the most important traits if you for success, because basically it just says you get up, you get on with it, you keep doing it until it's done. <laughs> and it's that plodding. And so I think that's, uh, I, I'm a plodder. So just keep at it, keep at it. Um, and I realize I've started my Lego, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I got Lego, I got a, to make up the Hogwarts castle, castle out of Lego. And it is exactly what works for me. And if I think about, so what is it then? It's so methodical. You take one piece, 
you know, you get this whole array of mishmash. It's all mixed up together. You sort it. You take one piece, you put one piece on, that piece goes on to the next piece. It's just the step-by-step -step process. Um, and then the last two things that I want to add into, into the pot in terms of, so what is it that else that you bring to the party um, is I learned to ask for help. As a um, strong, independent woman, <laughs> not something that I find easy to do um, and and even ask help from my daughters which is even more difficult because uh, you know you're predisposed to look after and care for and not be cared for by your daughters so it takes a tremendous amount of um, uh, I don't know sort of acceptance to allow that um, um, that receiving of help, but it is help. Um, and, and wider family and friends, just being there on the edges, just a supporting message, a help. Uh, you know, the, ch the cheers, you, you need a few cheers every now and again to say, okay, you can do it, Lee, you can do it. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to say is my sister and I did this 301 kilometer walk. So talking to my sister for 10 days, you know what? That was food for years. <laughs> I was able to feed off those that time with her. It was tremendously resourcing. And then there was one particular moment where I can do uphills. I'm very happy. I can slog up those hills. I don't mind. The downhills are really on my... I don't know, I just really, really battled. And the difficulty with the uphills is that inevitably there's a downhill. So there was one particular hilly section where uh, in one, one day where I just kept being jarred, jarred, jarred. And it just felt like it was the epitome of my life. It's like I get to the top and then I just keep getting down, 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 down. And I got to the top of the hill <clears throat> on this one particular occasion. And it was absolutely exquisite. One rolling hill after the next. Um, and I said to, to Cheryl, I am screaming. And we screamed. There was no one around. We were way behind everybody else because of these hills. So they were like five kilometers ahead. They were little, little, little you know, little dots in the <laughs> distance. And we screamed. It was joyous. Um, so that sometimes that's the little stuff or the big stuff, I don't know, that you need to do every now and again. That's going to get you over the next hill and the next downhill. <laughs> so that's my, my sharing about the big and the little stuff that's in us to keep us going. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Lee. Yeah, so uh, I, I quickly looked up your your five personality traits, and uh, I think I'll hand hand over to to the person in the group who uh, sort of lines up with the last one completely, and, uh, and and that's Trevor. So Trevor, over to you. So I don't want to be neurotic, um, but Lee, uh, I think this is all about perspective, for goodness' sake. You know, as I was listening to you over the last ten years, I was sitting thinking. And so, so what? Um, there are plenty of people who would just love to have had a life like yours over the last 10 years. This is all relative. Uh, it's all about perspective. And then you go and cap it all by turning around and saying, hey, uh, I love going uphill and I hate the downhills. Uh -uh. You have not run comrades. Um, <laughs> there's Ed, look at him. <laughs> this is, I mean... Uh, anyone who talks like you, but you're quite right. I mean, my knees are dead after 10 comrades. Uh, I can't even walk on these blooming knees on a flat. Um, and I think uh, this this thing about perspective, we, we all think that we have the worst of it. Uh, but there are other people that just have even worse. Uh, and I suppose uh, it's probably difficult to turn around. Well, so what about them? This is my life. Uh, this is how I'm feeling about my life. And that's why you've got to collaborate and connect with people. I think on forums like this, to be able to gain some perspective 
and add that perspective that comes in from others. And, uh, you know, we had a discussion on where do you fit in on the totem pole? Uh, so where do you fit in on this totem pole of relativity? I, you know, I'm, the, the phrase there, but for the grace of God go I, uh, is sometimes what we have to actually think back on and dwell on as far as I'm concerned. Um, what else? Neurotic? Mm, yeah, uh, listen, um, you know, you talked of um, having the strength and, and uh, where do you dig deep? I, and, and that this came out of a comrade story that I brought up yesterday. And, and as you were talking about that, I was thinking to myself, you know, when I was running this comrade, there, there were about anything between 1,000 to 1,200 odd people. It was sometimes very difficult for us to get to see uh, runners on the road. I mean, we'd, we'd run for three hours and not see anyone uh, over those time periods. Today, um, man, they run with 15,000, 20,000 odd people on the road. And what I'm amazed at is just looking at the different body types of people. Um, you'd get super athletes, uh, and then you'd get these long, tall, skinny guys. I'm sure Jasper Kluti came running past me, and I thought that guy, he would never, ever make it. And then you'd get the super fat individual that you thought, man, they must have fallen out of, of bed that day and got onto the wrong road, and they were running down the wrong road. But all of these people go through their own pain barriers. They find something way deeper in themselves uh, to get themselves over the pain barrier. That's what you learn from comrades. Each and every single one of those people push themselves beyond what they ever thought they could actually push before. And I think that's what's within each and every single one of us um, is that there's this extraordinary hanging in power in each of us. And the more that you can connect with other people that do these crazy things. I mean, there's one crazy guy in this network that I would never ever follow into the desert because he, he would have me dig a hole for myself in the desert. Uh, but that type of individual shows you how far you can actually push yourself. Um, so lovely topic. Uh, I suppose I better stop talking. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Yeah, always, uh, always trust trust you to take it on a on a slightly different tangent, which is good. So, yes, but no, I didn't. I didn't say you changed it. I just slightly different tangent, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to be Funny. kind this morning after calling you neur neurotic. So, yeah, yes, but you better try and rescue me from this one. Well, I'll take it on another tangent. I'll go back to Lee's opening statement about uh, what is that thing in you that uh, make you just push through whether you think at that point you have the resources or not. Uh, and I don't necessarily have an answer, but I'm going to try and come to an answer as, as I just share some personal experiences. And uh, in 1994, uh, we were just, uh, so, so financially I was, uh, I, I was already unemployed for two years. I was retrenched in 1992 um, and gradually living off the remainder of our bond because I tried to pay up my bond, but I had some excess there that we dipped into. And then, uh, uh, and building, all I had to do, uh, could do at that stage was building uh, our new life business. The, uh, and uh, with not too great success, uh, uh, I eventually earned half of what I earned as a salary. And uh, then I was basically pulled into Uganda. So someone uh, in 1994, uh, our borders came down, a new democracy, people start moving into South Africa for opportunities. And one such gentleman uh, from Uganda came to live in South Africa and he somehow ended up in my organization. Highly clever, uh, a uh, brilliant man but he kept saying the opportunity lies in Uganda and all I knew about Uganda was Idi Amin uh, and uh, a country in civil war uh, and I certainly had no desire whatsoever to go there but also for those of you who don't know uh, Africa is five times more expensive 
than anywhere in the Western world because of the lack of infrastructure. So uh, a, a very crappy one-star hotel will cost you what a five-star hotel will cost you here in South Africa. So the cost of doing business there is enormous. Uh, anyway, I ended up, uh, somehow they say, just come and talk to us here in Uganda. Uh, and they started to use the products and flew, flew it out by plane. And the, the New Life head office clearly told me not to, uh, that they're not ready, they're not going to move into Uganda. So I went basically to tell people, thank you for supporting us on the products. And that's basically all you'll be able to keep doing. Uh, but we cannot come into your country yet. And I actually told the leader of the group, that's what I was going to say. And he said nothing, but as I walked into the meeting the first night, he put, pulled me aside and he said, listen, you, you can't say what you were, were going to say, what, who we have in this room. And he then battled off a bunch of highly influential people in society that's in the room. They are here to know how are you going to do it. And I had no idea how we're going to do it because I had clear instructions that we're not going to do it. Um, but uh, I had a quick prayer and, uh, and I thought, well, the, the best way is to be honest. So I, I, I did the meeting on the basis of, I'm here to tell you that we can't do it, but if we are to do it, this is the only way we can do it. And I laid down the rules like we need investors who would have the money and then we would start a depot, et cetera, et cetera. Knowing that uh, the average earning of a middle management person is a fifth of what we were earning, let's say in South Africa. And I, you know, I couldn't see how everybody could come up with the money. But uh, I'm now talking 1994, uh, and, and I put down the rule that they had to put down $1,000 uh, to become an investor. That was the Monday. By Friday, when I flew back out, I had five people committing $1,000 cash. Uh, and I flew back with $5,000 in my pocket. And that's how Uganda started. And six months later, the company moved in. But I can tell you, uh, and during that week, I investigated how would we bring in products, where would we store it, and, and basically planned a business that I had no previous experience on. But I prayed, uh, and God sent me people who were familiar with the import-export side. Um, so I think, uh, to answer my own question, you, you sometimes just find yourself in situations that you haven't planned to be there, if anything, you would not want to be there. But once you're in it, it actually has the seed of, it, of opportunity. And because of that breakthrough in Uganda, within the next uh, six to 12 months, we open up in, uh, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Rwanda. Uh, and that was the start of us building our Eagle's Nest Lodge and Convention Center here in, uh, uh, in, in four ways. So, uh, I think sometimes it's like almost a comrade. You're on the road. Now you just have to, there's no way, unless you want to quit and an ambulance pick you up. The only way you get to the other side is put another foot forward uh, in front of the other and just run to the next, uh, 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 what do you call it, the water station. Fortunately, they're about two kilometers apart. And, uh, and how I motivate myself is just get to that tree. When you get to that tree, you can walk. Then I walk to the next tree and let just, uh, see if you can jog to that next telephone pole. So it's, it's, it's literally breaking down the problem in front of you, knowing that the only way through the storm uh, is through the storm, is not to stay in the storm. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Oh, thanks, thanks, Jasper. Uh, Well-painted pictures there, appreciate that. So yeah, uh, over to you for your thoughts on uh, how, you, how you dig deep, if you dig deep. Very interesting that um, in that um, you know comparisons are absolutely meaningless. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, ten years for Lee is ten years for Lee, and uh, regardless of other people doing comrades for 10, 10 years, you know, <laughs> um, I think the reality is is we have to uh, learn from the people who have dug deep and. And, and Jasper, thank you for that story, um, uh, an amazing story in that, uh, you know, going to Uganda and having a no, and then um, how do you do it? Well, I need to get $1,000 from people who can't even afford 100. 
um, and then getting five at the end of that. I mean, I think I think for me that is a useful uh, metaphor because because we we all are on a path, you know. Um, and when you're running comrades and you've and you've done it, and I've never run comrades, um, uh, and so I've never had to dig as deep as people who have run comrades are digging. <laughs> I'm digging deep at the moment in trying to do my planking, <laughs> and um, and 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 it's, and it's an interesting experience. And I think we have to learn to dig deep because it really is the only way to get through. Uh, we, you know, the, uh, I'm busy with this project, um, having uh, disappointments, and and the reality is that one has to dig deep. Um, and and. And you know the way through the storm is just to keep going through the storm. You know, and I think one of the things I've recognised for myself is that it's not important to come first, or but it is important to cross the finishing line. And I think, I think for me that is what digging deep means for me at the moment. So the journey will be another round. Um, and so, you know, Lee, there's going to be another year. <laughs> and, and I think if we've dug deep this year and we've crossed the finishing line and it doesn't matter that we've come at, right at the end, we will be stronger to, to do the crossing the next round or the next lap. And it will be easier because we would have learned. And, and, um, and I think it's good to hear examples like Jasper that says, you know, I have no idea what to do. You know, I prayed and I and I said, this is what we need. And I've never done this before. And I'm just going to keep doing it. And um, and look what happened, you know, phenomenal results. So I think one of the challenges that that I often run with is the belief in the vision. So so when times get tough, the vision is often challenged in terms of, is this worth it? Um, and, and, you know, I'm reading this book of the seals at the moment. And, and you know, when people go through hell week after, after years, I mean, they've spent two, three years practicing and training, saying they're going to be the seals. And then when they get to hell week, uh, you know, 80% uh, of them, uh, fall out, uh, give up. And I think, I think we have to hold on. Those of us who are are willing to risk pursuing a vision, you know, um, you know, for Jasper, it's been twelve years with his with his uh, gig, you know, um, pursuing a vision and 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 hanging in there. You, you, you become as strong as you are for now, and then you become a little bit stronger so that next time around, it's a little bit easier. Um, and I think that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. You know, it's, uh, you know, I'm 63. I mean, why the hell am I doing this? You know, it's, 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 it's crazy. You know, I, I should be retiring fishing at the beach, you know, um, is this worth it? Is this, you know, is this, is this, wall to push through um worth it while other people sit on the sidelines jeering at you you know um they, they're not encouraging they like jeering waiting for you to fail like vultures you know um so 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 bugger them uh push through you know let them sit on they're not even paying to be on the stands you know um they let them come onto the field or let them f off you know um um, so, so I think, I think if the vision is worth it, we, we need to keep believing that, that the vision is right. And if it's right for us, we need to keep pushing through as no matter how hard it is, uh, and, and do things like the plank so that you can get stronger, you know, um, just mentally stronger so that I know in a month's time, when I'm doing the plank for five minutes or ten minutes, you know, then, then I know that that I've, I've I can prove to myself I can do it, you know, and then, and then the wisdom of execution. I think we need to have wisdom in execution when when things don't work out well, 
to to do a plan B, you know, I, I don't like plan Bs because it kind of lets you not focus on plan A, but but when plan A falls apart, you know, then know that the vision is worth it. Push through, I mean, and 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 have the experience like like Ed, Edward, you know, I mean, you know, he's gone through these deserts. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine how hard that is. You know, um, so, so, yeah, that's all I have to say. We, we, we have to uh, hold on to the vision, push through, execute wisely, get stronger, and then go the next lap because the next lap will be stronger. And it doesn't matter. We'll keep just just keep crossing the finishing line one tree at a time. Right. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some great, some great points there. So, a man who's definitely done that is uh, Patson. So, Patson, welcome onto Wisdom's Chats. Uh, great to have you here this morning. And you've obviously picked up a little bit of an idea of how we do things and and what we're chatting about this morning. So, I'd just love to love to hear your thoughts. And uh, I'm sure you'll give us a little bit of insight into into your journey and your your story as you've uh, grown and developed your business. Hello, good. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be part of, of, of you, the wisdom team. Thanks, thanks, uh, Leo, for, for, for all this, obviously, all this execution. Um, and uh, uh, Jasper, congratulations again. And obviously, on this nice story which happened to you, I, I'm even thinking obviously of, of what I learned yesterday. I attended an online masterclass, which was mostly in, in, in the construction side. Uh, it was hosted by uh, Houting Province Treasury uh, and FNB. They did show us a picture of a building in, in, in um, what is this place? Um, uh, I just forgot this place in, in where the Guptas are. If somebody can, um, what is this place yeah, called? Dubai, in Dubai. Dubai, yes. A building in Dubai. So now they thought of, of the land, they thought of the building. Then they said, no, they need, they need the land first. They need to have the building. They need to have the structures. But then what are you going to do with that? Now, instead of all that building, then somebody thought of tourism to say, this is the best we can do for tourism. So everybody goes there for tourism. So in a nutshell, uh, it was about changing the mindset and changing the mind, mindset in saying, what can you do regardless to the situations that you are facing? What can you do to succeed or to go to the next step and the next stage of your business and the next stage of your success? So yeah, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit challenging, but I think with, with, with me now, being involved with obviously you guys, the wisdom team, uh, I've obviously gained a lot. I've obviously gained, you know, the courage. What pushes me through, obviously, it's, it's, it's knowing exactly what I want. Before I even approach the client, I have the price of the services. I have them in my head. Now, just on a, when was this? Uh, on, on, on a Saturday, on a Saturday late, we received a call, obviously they phoned the office, the office called me. I called this client, he said to me, he has had two break-ins and he's looking for, for guards. Uh, one day, one night for almost a month. Then he asked me to give him uh, a coat and he said, because it's a residential for himself, he has, to, he has to pay from his pocket. And then I said to him, I will give it to you at 12 and a half per guard, which will be 
25, excluding VET. Then he said to me, Fatson, you are way too far. And then I said, what's your budget? He said to me, the other guy quoted me 7,000 for both. Then I said to him, 7,000 for both, I'm paying my card, one card, seven grand. So unfortunately, say, I cannot assist you. But next time you are looking for something, let us know. So I think, I think, I, I think by so doing, obviously seeing that gap of, of, of what he was, he was obviously quoted for two guys, which was less for what I, I quote for one guy. And then there's no space to negotiate there. Then I move on. So I think if, if, if you know exactly what you want, what you are looking for, regardless to say, I have that passion in, 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 in assisting the clients wherever I can. If I can tell you there is this other client of us, we have been doing events for her. I once invited her to, to, to the meeting sometime, uh, Angelic Smith from Event Synthesis. Can you believe she got, she got a client in, in Midval and she called me to say, Petson, there is this service provider who is in the Midval for my client. Apparently, there is something wrong with their SIRA registration. Please, can you assist with just one card? I said to her, with pleasure. But now, looking at the distance for me to travel from here to the Midval, just for one card, I mean, it doesn't have a business sense for someone. But for me, because it's our client and it's that passion, obviously, to say, starting with that one card, it's, it's building up. She's already our client. She got a new client who has been disappointed. And obviously, because they have to uh, present to the job so that they can, they can give an allowance for, for, for the race to take place. Now, there has to be a security and there has to be a security plan. Then overnight, I did a security plan. I sent it to her. I called one of our guys from the, from the, from the Firenahen. And then I said to him, look, uh, let's, 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 let's meet in Mayaton. I'll pick you up to the, to, the, to, the, to the event. Then we took that. The following week, they had a big event, a break. They call it a break race event. Then they called for more cards. So to me, it's, it's, it's about that, that passion, you know? In, in, in assisting uh, wherever the clients need, need help. So that's, that's where I come in. And with that, I get that satisfaction, obviously, in saying the client is happy. So this has kept me moving, mo moving forward, although it's a bit difficult. Same applies with, with, with the, the, the training center. When I posted our, our, our grand opening special, <sighs> Three, three of the guys sent me messages and said, but I last heard you when, when saying you want to register, you already registered, that means I'm left behind. I said to him, I mean, if you want to do it, you will do it, your time will come. So <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity. Great, thanks, thanks so much, Petson. Yeah, and, and some, some great, uh, great stories and some good business sense there. And uh, you need to actually get to understand uh, Patson's backstory at some point, and then maybe we'll get him to to tell us uh, tell us a bit about that at uh, at the later stage. But uh, it's it's also an amazing story. So great, glad you joined us this morning, Patson, and I hope we'll we'll see you a bit more regularly. So good to have you here. All right, Ed. Thank you so much. Over to you. Yeah, we we, we come to my personality type agreeableness. Um, that's me. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a Trevor this morning and 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 um, not talk about the subject because um, I think the subject was what is in you, and I think what is more important is what is put put in you, not what's in you, what's put in you. I think we all have a basic um, bit of grit in us, a bit of determination because you know most people when faced with a challenge will actually rise to it to a certain extent. Um, but I think it's what's put in us. And I was quite interested in Lee thinking that she was, um, I don't know, tough, resourceful, 
um, determined, able to carry on because she was the oldest child. Um, my youngest daughter would argue that the complete opposite, um, that, that she could do it because she was the youngest child and she never got all the love and affection and advantage the first child gets. Um, so I think, you know, different things do different things to different people. Uh, and I've learned that when I've been um, helping on races. Sometimes someone comes into a checkpoint in complete bits and the only way to get them motivated is to give them a cuddle, give them a bit of kindness, give them some support and then send them on their way once you've built them up. Someone else might come in exactly the same state and the right thing to do is to give them a kick up the arse and tell them to you know, man up. Um, and knowing that um, way to treat people is an art form. And I think you only learn that by having dug really deep in yourself and really understand yourself. And I remember my in 1999 on Fields Hill, I had on Comrades, I had to have a real good rummage round in my sort of final stores of fortitude to find something to get me to the finish. And, and over the years, I've really got to understand what's in that sort of thing. And I always talk about the fortitude bank. I think you have to build up a fortitude bank and then you have to understand how to use it. Um, I was on a race one time. Um, I was uh, actually helping, I wasn't running. There was a really tough mountain stage. The weather changed. It was absolutely horrific up there. Um, and afterwards, I was talking to, to a young woman who it was her first time doing a stage race. It was her first time doing a, um, a really tough event like that. And she told me how she got through the mountain stage. And she got through the mountain stage because she suddenly realized it was an absolute piece of cake. It was nothing because she survived an abusive relationship and come out the other side. And she thought, if I can do that, I can do anything. And I think it is. We need that sort of stuff put in us. And we need to build up, up this fortitude bank and we need to um, learn how to use it. And people talked about hills. Lee talked about hills, uphills and downhills. And I remember I was I was running the very first of my attempts, well, I mean, not, not attempts, successes at doing three marathons in three days in different places. And the, the second one was a thing called the Snowden Marathon. Snowden's a big mountain in Wales. And I chugged up this, and, and, and the, the previous day I'd hurt my ankle on the first marathon. And I was chugging up this hill. And, and uh, got to the top and the, and the marshal there very kindly said, he says, oh, he says, you're, you're fine now. He says, it's a nice downhill stretch for four miles. And for me, that almost destroyed me. So what builds some people up will, will knock other people down. And I think Leo said it, you know, there were people jeering from the, from, from the sidelines and he said, sod you. But Lee said she needed some applause occasionally. So it's a whole mixture of bits and pieces. And I think sometimes it's just accidents. I, I was struggling in a race one time, going along, chatting to this guy. We got to a big hill and he said, oh, he said, you go on. He said, I find hills really, 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 really hard. And we had a quick chat. And the reason he found hills hard was because he had lung cancer and he couldn't breathe going uphill. Wow, what a motivation that was. I was never gonna drop out of that race after that. Um, so I think, it's getting those things into that fortitude bank and feeding off other people. And I do wonder what would happen if we had different lives, if we had different parents, if we had different experiences, would we have more or less fortitude than we've got now? But I always tell people who are gonna take on big challenges, go out and get yourself in trouble. Get yourself in some sort of situation that's not going to kill you, but, you know, go onto a moor and get lost, but get lost in a way that's not going to kill you. 
and then you just have to get out of it because there is no other way is there if you're lost on a moor the only way to get off unless you want the embarrassing thing of calling emergency services is to find your way off um, and it's like when when my world fell apart and i and i went into the to the worst desert i've ever been into in my life that's when my my, my marriage fell apart my wife left me i had to keep going there was no about because i because i was looking after my daughter there was no alternative I just had to keep going. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it. Just build your fortitude bank and, and look at everything with a positive. Those vultures are a positive because you never want to get caught by the vultures. Applause is a positive because it, it, it really builds you up. Um, yeah, so that's my thought on the whole thing. And um, yeah, I, I, I'll tell my... Um, younger daughter that she's really lucky that she, that she wasn't the older one uh, thanks Ed. yeah some some great some great points and i must admit when i thought lee was well when, when lee was talking about chairs i thought she was looking for somewhere to sit down not not for people to encourage her because uh, <laughs> after those those stories of all these long distances i definitely need somewhere to sit down um i've, I've managed to get myself up to i think 900 meters uh, jogging without uh, having to stop for a breather um so yeah and that, that's we've well, got a long way to go to hit 350 kilometers so but anyway I, I think I think it's all been said to be honest uh, but at the end of the day there are a couple of great pointers that came out for me and uh, you know there was uh, Patson's uh, you know focus on the passion and the vision and, and the mindset um, comments uh, love the fortitude bank uh, idea Ed uh, some some great stories all around and uh, I think you know for me just to really sum it up uh, we can always do more than we think we can you know we we just have to allow ourselves to do it um and i think too many people get to that point where their mind is telling them you know perhaps even their heart is telling them that they can't um but uh with a simple switch in mindset and attitude you can and you can go a lot further and it's actually just getting that that breakthrough that takes you to the next level um but all it does is take a little bit of persistence and uh, the ability to actually look at yourself and say, well, maybe I can. Let me do it. So that's me, Sally. Great topic this morning. Great discussion. So where do we go from here? Thank you, everyone. So amazing. You know, there's some wisdom chats that you just know are gold. Um, so thank you. Um, I, I would like to pick up on Edward's story around getting lost on the moors. What, so this is the question, what do you do when you get lost? Next, All right. back so, tomorrow. So you know, hopefully she's not telling you to get lost and I uh, hope you find us tomorrow morning. Um, we can talk about getting lost. All right, so have a great day. Don't get lost, come back tomorrow. We'll see you then. Have a good one, cheers. Thanks guys.